Hey y'all, thank you so much for watching Miss Angelique TV where we talk about everything and when I mean everything, I mean like yet another story time um, episode or episode series, whatever, um, of the series that I'm currently doing. If you're new to my channel, thank you so much for watching. If you don't know, I am doing a series. It's pretty much discussing the different um, details in my life, um, just growing up with a, a mother that was toxic pretty much and so um, I'm just talking about my journey and if you are just now tuning in I need you to stop this video go to my very first video which is titled mom left my father for another woman because you're gonna be lost you're gonna be confused like bitch you're gonna be confused okay and I don't want y'all to be confused I want y'all to know what was, what's going on from step to step from detail to detail because as y'all know I'm a detail as bitch like a bitch would be detailed as fuck I mean if you just stop the video go ahead go back if you haven't if you are all cut up girl boy thank you I know I haven't been as consistent um y'all and it's crazy because this, this story time that I am this series that I am doing it's still being written like and whenever I say still being written I mean like it's not over like I'm still going through whatever the fuck I'm talking about I'm just just now kind of getting into the climax of the story um we're not quite yet into 2018 2019 which is the most recent things that I'm going to be discussing within this story time series but we haven't gotten that far yet so um, we're still in, I believe at this point we are in, we're in 2015. So um, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below because you don't want to miss this. You don't want to miss these crazy ass details, y'all. I know um, last story time was pretty, pretty fucking long. I should have fucking named it a story time movie because like, bitch, anything over like 42 minutes or whatever, it's considered a movie. We interrupt our program to bring you this important message. I hope y'all enjoyed this story time and let's go ahead and get started. Alright y'all, so we left off um, my last story time which was titled um, My Mom Assaulted an 85 Year Old Woman. Which, you know, if you, look, I ain't much gonna talk about what, what I talked about in that story. Because if you, if you don't know, you need to go and go back. So I ain't much gonna discuss that, the actual details. But if you already caught up, you know what I'm talking about. You know what happened. You know that shit was crazy as hell. Leaving off at the moment where my mom got arrested for that situation. She was only in jail for that for a couple of days. Yeah, just for a couple of days from that time. But you know what? See, I be, you know, go ahead, girl, do your thing. So we're gonna go and keep track of her jail days okay of her jail visit so we are on jail visit one all right and so um, jail visit number one um you know we discussed she allegedly attacked um an 85 year old woman now um i'm saying allegedly at the moment because uh well she's already been convicted of it but at the moment we Oh, my bad, bitch. At the moment, she hasn't been convicted. So, at this time, allegedly, she attacked an 85-year-old woman. And when I say she, I mean my mom, obviously, duh. I talked to my mom a few days after she got out of jail. And that's when she finally told me what happened. She told me that she went over there to supposedly get her clothes. And if you remember, the police report stated that supposedly, she, you know, she had some things left in the house. And she wasn't allowed at the house unless, unless she was getting her, gathering her things. And so... My mom went back there and um, she didn't go, she she went there with a motive, like she knew what she was going to do, like she she knew, I don't know if she knew to, to the extent to what she was going to do, but she knew she was going to cause some trouble, I can tell y'all that, um, because she was already heated at the fact that, you know, her and uh, Mouth, they didn't work out, she caught him talking to Gorilla, which is the mistress, and the mistress back at the house taking care of Granny, which is Miss Snow. Now my mom is back living with Rough Rider, but Rough Rider, which we'll get into that shortly, things aren't really going too well over there. And um, she still had to go to court to actually face the whatever happened or whatever because she pled not guilty. The judge ordered her not to go back to the house, which you know, where Miss uh, Snow and Gorilla and Mouth resided, which is also the house household that I grew up in which is also the household that my mom was in prior to but he ended up letting the mistress come back in yes it's a lot it's a lot bitch it's a lot but um she was supposed to not ever go back to the house ever again and so she was also ordered to stay away from Miss Snow and also um Miss Gorilla it was a restraining order 
put in place because of that because of the harassment and stuff because I told y'all my mom would like call the house and like you know terrorize them and still at this point after she got out of jail she still yet again started calling them and uh, one time me and my mom were, were talking and so um she was I don't know exactly what we were talking about but she had um, made a comment basically saying how she had been riding by the house um because it's, it's like a, it's the street that uh, miss miss snow state lives on it's a dead end so it's like you can you gotta go down and you gotta come back out and go out you know the way that you came in so um my mom would would uh, also go behind the street because behind the street was like a, a church or whatever and also like we call it the projects it was kind of like a, a ghetto as apartment like a, a complex or whatever but um it was parking lots right there and you can literally see miss miss uh, snow's house from the church and like if you park in the parking lot of the church you can see her backyard and so um my mom would tell me that she would go and you know go to that parking lot and just sit in the car and just you know looking just to see if jesus I'm saying a nigga name again um <laughs> to see if miles was um there or not and see how much time he was like just crazy freaky weird shit okay so um i told her i was like ma like you know you're not supposed to be be doing that like you're not supposed to go around i don't want you to get in no more trouble you you've already been in jail mind y'all this is my mom's first time ever going to jail my mom has never went to jail not for no fucking traffic ticket bitch not for nothing nothing at all she's never went to jail at all until she like she how you wait till you get 39 40 years old to start going to jail like what the fuck that doesn't even make sense but like whatever girl i was telling mom like mom you shouldn't do that or whatever she agreed she was like yeah you know you're right um this and that i'm gonna stop whatever and i'm like okay you know i i, I believe you know don't don't let me down so you know um, I, I didn't want my mom, my mom to go back to jail. Like, even though we had went through whatever, like, I still didn't want my mom to go to jail. Like, who wants to see their mom in jail, you know? Usually, my mom and I would talk, like, every other day, if not every day, because um, she would always, like, want to FaceTime with the kids or whatever. And so, this one particular day, I, did, I hadn't heard from my mom at all whatsoever. Like, I didn't hear from her, no text, no no Facebook post, anything. And that's another thing. That's another reason how I be knowing that something be wrong because my mom at this time in her life she would post not on facebook instagram non the fuck stop like just post and talk and shit like y'all i told y'all in my previous stories i told y'all like she would go on these rampages on facebook exposing people and all of this stuff and you know everything she would do she would post on facebook she goes to the hospital she posting a picture on facebook posted up at the bus stop like walking the street like my mom didn't have nowhere to stay she was literally walking the street so i mean at this time she was in and out of rough riders house um but she really didn't have really no stable place to stay and so anytime i would see her not post anything not call me not text me none of that then i immediately was at this time i would get worried like back in the day i wouldn't get worried because I, like mom really never really was on social media or anything but now i get worried because i know like whenever my mom is not on social media something is fucking wrong bitch so i call my mom or whatever it goes to voicemail oh my god anytime a bitch phone goes straight to voicemail you know that bitch phone ain't never there it's because she in jail bitch she in jail mm -hmm. She went to jail, okay? Like, I don't care what y'all say. Like, she went to jail. That's I automatically feel. When somebody's voice, uh, phone goes to voicemail for more than a, a lot of times, like, you know, and time is going by and I still haven't heard from that person, like, I'm going to assume like, they, they're in jail. Like, that's that's what it is. Like, bitch, you, you locked up. I'm going to be trying to make phone calls, trying to bail you out, and I don't even know if you really in jail or not. Like, that's the type of bitch that I am. In my mom's case, I just had a horrible feeling horrible horrible feeling i got a call from my grandma and y'all know i told y'all my grandma got this this tone in her voice i know something's wrong <laughs> i know something's wrong whenever she had this, this certain tone in her voice so she called me i answered hello i just got some disturbing news from we're gonna call her miss 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 Curly, fuck it. I said Miss Curly because she got like this nice, pretty curly hair, like naturally. So, um, my grandma called me and she was like, I just heard from Miss Curly. And mind you, Miss Curly was like um, one of my childhood, I don't know, god mom kind of sort of was so, something like that. Because um, I considered her daughter um, like my god sister. And so, my mom and Miss Curly, they grew up in the church together. Like, they grew up in the choir together. They were singing in the choir together as well. 
and stuff um, back in New Orleans. And so um, she was, after the hurricane, after Katrina, she, um, Miss Curly, she moved back to um, New Orleans or whatever. And so she didn't stay too far from Mouth's mom's house. Miss Curly was just like, my mom showed up at Miss Snow's house again. First, she started banging on the window. Miss Snow has a, a side window. Like if you go in, she, she got two doors. She got the front door and she got the side door. And usually we go, in, go through the house with the side door. And next to the side door, we got the room to the, one of the rooms in the house. My mom was banging on the window, I guess. And, and that's the room to um, Mouth and Gorilla's room. And so my mom was banging on the window and, and apparently she banged so hard that the window cracked. She broke the window. And so once she did that, she, um, cause no one was answering the door. Like she was trying to, allegedly trying to get her stuff, but we know like she was trying to cause some trouble. There was an ant pile in Miss Snow's lawn and my mom set the ant pile on fire. I was also told that my mom took her dirty tampons, dirty pads, and she spread it all over the driveway on top of Mouth's mistress car, which is Gorilla. And um, she also put her under her dirty underwear on, you know, the antenna. She put that on the antenna of the car. The most disturbing thing that she did, I don't know where this shit came from. And to this day, my mom has never, like, clarified this. She never, like, I, I, honestly, I'm fucking scared to ask her about it. Because that shit is fucking nasty as hell. Like, you don't, how do you ask somebody, like, is it true that you, like, put dirty tampons, like, all over the house? Like, is that true? Like, how do you ask somebody that? So it's like, whenever I was listening to this, like, it was so fucking, it was unbelievable to me. Because it's like, that's not my mom. Like, what the, that's not my mom at all. My mom was so out of her mind and so crazy, madly in love with mouth all over again for whatever reason. I don't know where the, where the love came from, bitch, because you was just with a, 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 a woman for about 10 years now. So, I don't know. But uh, anyways, you know, um, that's the side point. But she was madly in love. And so, you know, sometimes love make you go crazy. And the type of man Mouth was, he literally drove her crazy. He would, like, tell, tell her things to get her hopes up. He would just do some fucked up ass shit or whatever. He would really, really manipulate my mom because he knew that my mom was crazy about him. So he knew that my mom would do anything for him. And I'm pretty sure he didn't know that my mom was gonna do what I'm about to tell y'all next. Curly also explains that my mom, I don't know if she took a shit before or took a shit right there. She spread her own feces. I don't know if it was actually her own feces or not. I've spoken directly to Gorilla after the situation and she briefly told me about that. It was definitely feces all over the window of um, Gorilla's car. The ant pile was still on fire. Yeah, you know, don't forget about that. I don't know who put the shit out. My mom fled. She ended up being arrested again. I don't know how she ended up being um, getting arrested the second time. I don't know how they found her. I don't know, she maybe just ran into them. I don't know, but she ended up getting arrested. This time she was in there for um, a month. Um, she was in there for a month this time. And so this would have been the longest she's been in there. Even in jail, my mom was calling their house. And it's like she constantly, constantly, constantly disobeyed the restraining order. I don't know how many times that they've actually, whenever I say they, I mean like Gorilla and Miss Snow, I don't know how many times they've actually called like the cops on my mom to like report that she's harassing them still. Um, but I do know that um, it was a lot of times. And so I'm um, always arrested, but they, they didn't keep her that long. Um, they kept her for a month. They were actually supposed to keep her a little bit longer than that, but it was overcrowded and so, they released her. She was released. So now I'm moving on to October 2014. My mom got out of jail the same month of her birthday. While my mom were, was in jail for that month, we had still been, you know, communicate with her, like putting money on the phone so that she could like call us or whatever. Before she was released, my grandma and I we were talking and we knew my mom needed help at this point. It was no doubt in our minds that my mom didn't need help. It was no doubt in our minds that my mom didn't have a mental illness. We just didn't know what it was. Like we, we've never dealt with mental illness is in my family that I know about. Like, I don't know, maybe just, I don't know. Like, I don't know if maybe there are some undisclosed illnesses that maybe just no one in my family talks about. So this is all new to us. This was all so new to us. We didn't know how to handle it other than what we were doing, you know? And so we were like, okay, hey, this is not like my mom. At this point, this is my mom's second time. <laughs> my mom's second time appearing in jail. Uh, this is her second time getting arrested and so, I'm like, dude, like, this is not, this is the same right. So, 
Um, my grandma and I, we talked, and so we were just like, hey, we need to figure out a way to get your mom up here in Houston, because, uh, you know, my, my grandma and my mom, they had, at this point, made amends, because, you know, her and my mom, they, and my aunt, they, like, had it real, like, my mom just had it out for them so bad, you know, in the beginning, whenever she initially left Houston, and so, um, at this point, they had made up whatever, so cool, whatever. I'm so glad, because, y'all, you know, I'm, I'm a family-ass person, well, at that point. I had I was such a family person and so it really really broke my heart that like my mom really wasn't in the picture at this time so whenever my mom was getting out of jail and me and my grandma was you know making up a, coming up with a plan to get her out and and you know get her to Houston I'm like cool like like let's do it so my mom made it to Houston she was just there with the clothes that she went to jail with and um, that's it like she had nothing she had like y'all let me tell y'all I'm gonna tell y'all something. My, I look like a grandma. <laughs> look at me, what the fuck? Before my mom left Houston, y'all, she had flat screen TVs, house full of furniture, kitchen full of dishes, house full of just stuff. Like, you know, over the years as you get older, you just start to have stuff, you know? Like, like me, I'm 23 and I just realized I have stuff now. Whenever she came to Houston to get the rest of her stuff, she had, um, she had a fucking big ass 65 inch TV that of course, Rough Rider um, convinced her to uh, to have or to to purchase whenever she was living with us because that's how long we had been having the TV for a while. But she ended up giving that big ass screen TV to Rough Rider, and oh, I forgot to tell y'all, bitch, I'm so these goddamn kids. So I forgot to tell y'all, I'm so glad I'm thinking about it because I didn't usually I like make notes or whatever um, that way I don't forget because it's been so long. Like I be missing information and shit sometimes. So. I just realized um, whenever my mom up and quit her job, she um, had like some vacation time and stuff. So they not only she had her regular check, but she also had vacation time. And so they were going to just pay her off for everything. And so I remember the check was like 3000 and something. And the reason why I know this is because um, I had a mom's account information like a uh, banking account like the reason why I had it like I, I knew all of her passwords and like every every so often like she would ask me to like check it or something so um I knew it and so um this is right this is right after she left to get her stuff well oh, I'm sorry right before she um came to Houston um you know for the first time to get her thing she had told me about the check and so um, she had got her little three thousand dollars or whatever, and so that's why she got the U-Haul. She was able to afford the U-Haul or whatever to get to Houston. She promised me that she was gonna give me some money to help me out, cause like I I I hadn't um, been working, and so well I had just started working at the call center, and so I, you know I hadn't had any checks or whatever, and so you know I, I needed some help, and so um, I asked her, and someone was like, yeah, cool, I'll help you or whatever. And y'all, mind y'all, at this point, like I hardly ever ask my mom for help. Like ever since I started working at the age of 16, like I hardly ever asked my mom. If anything, it was my mom asking me, you know. But at this point, you know, this had been the longest that I was really without a job uh, ever in my life. And by the, by the way, that was the, the last time I was ever without a job for that long, bitch. She didn't tell me how much she was going to give me, but I figured it was going to be a good amount. Or not a good amount, but I, I figured it was going to be like something. She bought rough rider stuff and um, her and rough rider went got ta matching tattoos on the back of their ear and they got their nails done they had got their a mani and a petty like they had it like they was going out to eat like doing all of the stuff that they used to do whenever um rough rider was living with us just minus me and what the fuck i got to say about it pretty much and i was just like damn like you spending all of, all of your money like I, I saw like one time she had paid a bill for cox and if you don't know cox is a um it sounds so horrible. Cox Cable. They are a, a company, like a cable service, and a popular cable, cable service in Louisiana. And so I saw that on one of her transactions, and I know she didn't have Cox, and I know um, Mouth's mom, she was the one, like, always paying the cable bill and stuff like that. So, I, you know, she would pay that out of her disability check. So I know she wasn't paying her bill. So whenever I saw them, like, mm, she gave me seventy dollars. I was grateful for her giving me money. Don't get me wrong, but I was upset at the fact that I felt like had she not did so much for Rough Rider, she could have given given me a lot more because she promised me a lot more than seventy. Like she told me she was gonna give me a couple of hundred. I don't. A couple of hundreds could have been two hundred. That's fine with me. And like it took her forever to give me the money. It's like she like waited till she like was broke to give me money. So I was like kind of like bummed out about that. 
Um, and I thought that was really, really fucked up. But um, I forgot what the fuck I was getting ready to say, bitch. I, I didn't went all the way back, and I don't even know where I was going with this, bitch. Let me go back to my notes and re retract. Oh, that's what I was saying. Going back. So I was saying all of that to say um, whenever my mom got out of jail for that month, she didn't have anything. Even like our important documents. She had it in a storage in Louisiana, but she ended up losing the storage and they ended up fucking auctioning off all of her things because she couldn't afford it anymore because she hadn't been working. And so Mouth, even though he was working, I don't know what the fuck he was doing with his money. Like, I think he worked at this furniture company and like... You know, whenever you order furniture and you have it delivered, like, the guys come up and set it up. I think that's what, what the type of shit that he did um, and still might do. But, like, the storage was only, like, about 75 bucks a month. You mean to tell me you couldn't get that from your husband, you know, like, that you was just so crazy about? Like, you just up and left everybody for a little Well, she didn't really leave us for him. She left us for other things, but he ended up crossing her path, and so... You know, whatever. It hurted me to see my mom not have anything because I was so used to, like, all of my life at this point. I'm 19. The first 17 years of my life, I've seen my mom have everything she could possibly need. Like, I mean, don't get me wrong. Like, we weren't rich or anything, but I was making decent money. I mean, debt to income ratio was just not working. So it was like, even though she was making a lot of money, really, she really wasn't. See my mom come to Houston with nothing was just like damn like that really really like showed me how like I first handedly saw how a person could have something and then lose it like nothing like like that quick I was like damn that shit is fucking crazy and all because of her mind you know but at this point like I wasn't really sure what it was because like she's never been diagnosed with anything she never went to the doctor she never showed us showed us signs until now like 40 years later and now all of this is all of a sudden happening. At this point, my grandma was already settled in, in her new place. And uh, the new place is literally across the street from um, where my mom lived. I guess I can put the background of the actual apartments because, you know, because nobody lives there anymore, so it don't matter. So these are the actual apartments, which was right across. Maybe I can show y'all the street sign. or Maybe I can show y'all the intersection of how close the apartments that my grandma moved to were. So these were the apartments right here and where my mom was staying at and where she up and left everybody at. Yeah, those were the apartments that she was living in. And these are the apartments that my grandma moved in um, whenever my mom up and left everybody. And so my grandma had to go somewhere where she couldn't afford. And so that's where she went. Whenever my mom came in town, you know, I, I decided to, um, you know, spend a couple of nights there to see, uh, let her see the babies and stuff and uh, we'll see the baby because at this time I was, uh, I only had my daughter. I, I didn't have my son yet. I was actually pregnant with him um at this point and so um i was at this time it was like october and so um i was working at the call center that my grandma and i don't know if i've mentioned this in my previous story times i don't think i did but um i got my my grandma was hired at the same call center the same exact call center that i was um hired on i started working at the call center in february you know the training that i was supposed to be doing or that i did for the six weeks or whatever that the reason why my, my daughter had to stay with mom like yeah, my grandma ended up getting hired on a couple months later. Um, I, she got hired on, uh, I can't remember the month, but um, she got hired on. And so um, after my grandma got hired on, my aunt got hired on as well. So all three of us was just working up there. And so whenever my mom came in town, we were like, hey, let's see if my mama could, you know, get a job up here. Because it was fairly easy to get a, get a job up there. Like the, turn, the, the turnover rate was really, really high. Like people up and left, got hired, got fired got hired quit whatever you know it was a lot of that going on there so um you know it was easy so i'm like okay well maybe my mama could do it you know she don't have nothing so she needs to start start somewhere right so we was like okay cool we're gonna uh, allow her to go and um you know we're we gonna let her apply for this job so she applied for the job had the interview boom she got the job cool thank god that's that's amazing right we're getting somewhere we're getting somewhere y'all getting somewhere at least i thought she had to catch the bus because um my, my grandma she was catching the bus even though my, my grandma had her own car at this time um my grandma like old school like she ain't trying to be stuck in no houston traffic going downtown because the job was downtown essentially and maybe i could put the actual building right here 
Y'all know how I do. So yeah, this is the building, the actual building that we worked in. We worked on the fifth floor. Um, the name of this company, I guess I can say it, it's called um, iCore. We worked for a company called called Ceasefire Wireless. And Ceasefire Wireless is a is a phone company. I know y'all probably never heard of it. Well, some of y'all have. If you live in the Mississippi area, Tennessee, Alabama, Pensacola area, um, you you probably know what I'm talking about. It's a it's a phone company called Ceasefire Wireless, and um. I worked there for um, a while. Trash ass phone company, trash, 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 but baby, I worked there. And they started us off at 10 or $9. Um, her and my grandma got the bus together, actually, I believe. Went to the job for her very first day, and so she was in the classroom, the training room classroom, that is. And so um, the trainer was handing out pens um, to everyone. I guess they were supposed to get up and, and take a pen if they didn't. Um, have one and so my mom got up and got her pen, but she didn't want one pen. She wanted two So um, my mom got two pens for what reason? I don't know the trainer told her Hey, you know, can you just take one pen because we don't really have that many pens and I want to be sure that everyone who needs a pen is able to have a pen So um, my mom girl she didn't like that mm -mm. Nope Mm -mm, nope, she didn't like that. She didn't like for the trainer to tell her that, sweetheart. Let me tell y'all something. My mom went, to, my mom told this lady, she said, What you mean I can't get two pins? If you like y'all pay that much anyway, you know what? I don't need this job. I don't need this. I come from working a $22 an hour job. I don't need this. So she storms the fuck out in front of everybody. She storms out and she leaves. Mind y'all, this is the first day. Not only is it the first day, but it's also the first hour, okay? Like, she didn't even last an hour. She had to have already had a mind of her own going to that job that she really didn't want to fucking be there because you didn't even try. Like, you just went completely off. I didn't know what happened. All I saw my mama was back on the bus because, you know, she, she posts everything on Instagram and stuff. So, um, my mom was on Instagram doing a video of her listening to music and stuff on a bus. And I'm like, wait, bitch, I thought she was supposed to be at work. So, I ended up talking to my mom and she told me the situation and she was just like, I don't like the way she was talking to me. She didn't have to talk to me the way that she was talking to me. And I come from a job making $22 an hour. I don't need this. I don't need none of this. Okay, mom. Okay. Because I don't need to be this humble ass woman. Let me tell y'all, mom was so humble. But she wasn't any, she wasn't that no more, like at all. Like she thought because she had a high position at some point or a high paying job at some point that she was able to just quit that job, go to Louisiana and get arrested a couple of times to come back to Houston and start making big bucks again. Like, no, sweetheart, like, you've got a whole, you're a felon now. Because, by the way, she was, again, she was convicted of it. Um, she, you're a felon now. And so, um, it's hard for you to get a job. And so, now you go from having this clean record to now you can't get a job. You've had this clean record for 40 years. And now you can't even simply get a regular job because of your criminal history. And thank God the job that I was working at, or, you know, the job that we tried to get my mom on. Well, we did, but she, she didn't succeed. But that job didn't even do background checks, so she was good. Like, you you, you had the perfect job. No, it wasn't paying as much as you were, pay, were making before. But, hey, you got to start somewhere. You decided to leave. You decided to get up and leave everything as if, you know... I don't know. You you decided to do that. So now you have to start over. And it's like my mom wasn't grasping that. She wasn't grasp, grasping the fact that she had to start over. She wasn't grasping the fact that she fucked up. <laughs> Pretty much. You fucked up. And so now you got to start over. You, you're, you starting, you're at the bottom. Like you went from living with Rough Rider to coming here. Uh, my mom really didn't even, even like living with Rough Rider. Because Rough Rider didn't treat her the way that she should have treated her. As a, a guest or as a best friend and um apparently refrider was putting her hands on her like some relationship ass type shit but you know she you know you know i was embarrassed honestly not embarrassed because i felt like they knew that she was my mom because no one knew that she was my mom um thank god um but i was just embarrassed at the fact that like you really sat up here and did this like my grandma was already working in the same department that my mom was getting trained to work so i think my grandma like introduced my mom to some of the people there and so i i was really just embarrassed mainly on the simple fact of my grandma and so people knew my grandma was my grandma so they probably would i don't know if they would tie tie two and two together i'm pretty sure they would but maybe not i don't know but i don't know if they knew that she was my mom or not all i know is i was embarrassed as fuck and so um after that my mom would just stay at the house and whenever me at the house I'm in my grandma's house because you know she didn't have nowhere to go um you know she didn't quit her job or whatever so my aunt went to houston 
community college downtown. She went to the downtown location at this point. And so um, my mom wanted to go by the church where she used to work at. That picture looks familiar? Okay, just checking. My mom wanted to go to the church, y'all. She wanted to go to the church, yep. Mm -hmm. She asked my aunt, cause she used her car, cause she borrowed her car. And so my aunt was like, well, I gotta go to school. So, you know, the, the church is downtown as well as my aunt's school. So, you know, it kind of played out well. She was like, uh, well, I don't have much gas. So I don't know if you are gonna be able to like go to the church come back home and then come pick me up whenever um, I'm out of school. Cause she, I don't know, she was in class. She probably was, probably was in class for uh, more than a, more than about two hours. She had to have been. So um, my mom was like, okay, cool. Um, never mind. She told her she wasn't gonna go. So she dropped her off to school downtown and she went back home to my grandma's house. And I guess something just came over her and said, bitch, you better go, you better go to that church. She got her in my aunt's car and went to the church. She went way back downtown. So instead of my mom going, drop my aunt off and pick her up, like she said, my mom drops her off, goes back to the house, then decides, hey, I'm gonna go back downtown to go to the church and give them a piece of my mind and then go back home until my sister tell me she ready for me to pick her up. Like, they don't even, like, that don't even make sense for her to do, right? I don't know exactly how much gas was in the car, but bitch, the, the, the car ain't really have much gas because by the time, and let me tell you what my mom did at the church. My mom went to the church. I don't know if she went to the, to directly to the pastor or, or who she went directly to, but she went somewhere and was pretty much going off on everybody, just saying how, you know, they allowed her boss to bully her and they allowed her boss to, to just make her workplace so miserable. Mind y'all, she, she, like, she didn't even never, ever, ever say anything to these to people about the way her boss is treating her. Like, she would, of course, say these things, uh, you know, amongst me and her or, you know, my grandma or whatever here and there, but she would never, like, complain directly to them. So, you know, this is all new to them. They're like, what are you talking about? Like, what protect you from what? Like, like what, what do you mean? And so I thought you quit. Like, what's going on? Um, my mom was trying to get her job back. Okay, and I know y'all like, wait, how she gonna go give them a piece of her mind and then try to get her job back? Girl, I don't know. But um, my mom had it in her mind somehow. She felt like they were gonna give her job back. So that was the main reason why she went back to the church because she just knew that, you know, they would give her her job back. But um, it didn't turn out how she expected it to, obviously. And so um, she became so rowdy to the point where they had to remove her from the church and they told her she couldn't come back. So not only she's now, now, let's pull out the chart. So first she burned her bridges with her apartment complex, okay? She burned her bridges with her apartment complex and then went ahead and moved with Mouth and his mother. Burned her bridges with them, went to Rough Rider's house. I don't know if she burned her bridges or if Rough Rider was just sick and tired of her, I don't know. But she, I don't know, she just left there. That's a question mark for right now because we don't really know what well, I know now. But yeah, y'all don't know what actually went down yet, okay? So that's a question mark. But then she burned her bridges with the job, okay? That's another bridge she didn't burn. You know, we, we, tried, to, we tried to get her employed. We tried our best, but she burned her bridges there. Um then she burned her bridges with the church okay um and she gets kicked out of the church and the the church tells her she is no longer welcome back how you get banned from going to church like i i, I thought it was come as you are like I'm, I'm she came as she was and she was mad but she came as she like <laughs> i don't know like it's not funny but i'm just saying like how do you get i never knew someone to get you know banned from a church like you have to have done something really really off the wall to where the church felt like they couldn't even save you she even put the church on blast on facebook and all of that you know like i said she was putting everybody on blast at this time so after she got kicked out from the church um she left and went back to the house and um shortly after she made it back to the house way mind y'all this is her second trip going downtown Bitch, downtown ain't. Let, let me let's let's go ahead and get Google Maps. Let's let me show y'all how far this and I, I'm gonna put the exact address into. I'm sure this is how far it took my mom to go from 
point A to point B. Now, I don't know if they're going to include the traffic, bitch, but whatever this is, let's just add on 30 minutes to that because traffic is a motherfucker in Houston, especially going to and from downtown on Highway 290. Like, my aunt already warned her. The car didn't really have that much gas in it, so don't go doing shit you ain't got no business doing. Just do what you, what you, you know, said you was going to do, and that was that. She told her she was going to go to the church, but she didn't tell her she was going to go back you know, like back to the house and then to church. Like she didn't tell her she was gonna do that. And so my mom make it on the other side of town and my aunt is ready. She's ready for her to come pick her up. And so my mom freaked out because she ain't got no gas. So on her way there, I guess she had to stop because she felt like she wasn't gonna be able to make it. And so my aunt's boyfriend had to meet her somewhere to give her some gas money. But I'm just saying that that particular situation to say like my mom made some dumb ass, crackhead ass decisions. My mom's decisions never was was that horrible Let, let's let's do a checklist real quick so so far my mom has burned the bridge with her job and so that's for up and quitting her job for no apparent reason you know good ass paying job for no apparent reason she burned her bridges with them okay then she burned her bridges with her apartment complex because now she has a broken lease she up and quit her job which means she no longer can afford to keep her apartment so she burned her bridge with her apartment by just up and leaving her apartment miss snow um which is my mom um she burned her bridge with her because allegedly she attacked her well she did attack her well allegedly at this time she attacked her no one will allow at the house anymore possibly rough rider but at this point we don't know what's going on with her and rough rider just yet because um yeah i ain't get to that yet so then we also have the new job she burns her bridge with the new job that we got her on and you know i was kind of a little bit embarrassed about it or whatever because like the fuck like you could have kept that job but you know whatever she burned her bridge with this job a second time because she thought she was gonna get her job back when she knew damn well she wasn't gonna get a job that you just up and randomly quit and just went off on everybody for and then you go back to the job to go off on and then try to get your job back what and then now she's burning her bridge with my aunt's car because now she's no longer to drive the vehicle y'all see that shit bitch? i want y'all to see all of the bridges that my mom has um burned of the course of this series that i'm doing okay i'm a visualized ass bitch i'm a receipt bitch and i'm an email and ass bitch but one thing about me i am also a visualizing ass but i like to imagine shit i like to visualize it to kind of you know get a feel to it. Well, at this time you know she's no longer allowed to drive anyone's vehicle at this point because no one really just trusts her anymore um so now she's back stuck at the house you know my grandma still got her job you know she's still riding metro to go back and forth to work or whatever but my mom is staying at the house with my grandpa now my grandpa is an elderly man at this point he's passed away since but at this point he's alive and well um but he's elderly and he had a stroke a couple years back and so he he's just not the same you know and so um he would be at the house most of the time well he is always at the house he was always at the house because you know he didn't work or anything so um my mom would be there all the time. She began to stay up all night. The first time that she like, you know, exploded on everybody, like prior to that, like my grandma had noticed that she wasn't really sleeping much. And so she started that same thing again um, in Houston after she finally came back from everything. Um, you know, we're we're all on good terms with her at this point, and she's living with my grandma, but she's not really sleeping. She's real, real, like, snappy on edge. She's trying to convince us that she's okay. She will wash clothes all day if she possibly can. Like, anything she could find to wash, she would try to wash it. She would, like, clean up a lot. Like, I know y'all like, bitch, okay, clean up, duh. Like, I mean, that's what she's supposed to do. But it became compulsive. Like, it, it became to where it was a problem. She was using up my grandma's um, laundry detergent, and y'all know, like, my grandma, she's on a fixed budget. And so she ain't got she ain't got time to be like going through washing detergent. That became a problem. My mom, she ended up getting cell phone service in my grandfather's name um, for me and her. We had got a line together, but it was in my grandfather's name because I think she like owes Sprint or something and you know, whatever. My grandpa is over 80 years old. And so, you know, they don't really know exactly how stuff works nowadays. So he agreed to allow my mom to use his uh, social security number to um, get the phone lines. Um, so we got the phone, boom, a couple weeks passed. I don't know what happened. I don't, cause I wasn't there. I'm only telling y'all that most of the stories that I'm telling y'all, you know, I wasn't really actually there. Um, but I was just told either directly from the horse's mouth, which is my mom or from my grandma or whoever. So, um, 
something happened. My my grandma was home and my pop my grandfather was home as well as my mom and this is talking about at my grandma's house. I wasn't there. I was um at this time me and Freddie was living with um Freddie's mom. We had moved out um to save up some money to to get another place. I'm chilling, you know, just came home from work and you know I'm chilling. I'm I'm pregnant at this time. I'm like, what? seven months pregnant seven eight months pregnant so that i had a missed call from my mom and i didn't know you know what it was so you know i wasn't really in too much of a rush to call her back but then i noticed that i had a voicemail so i checked the voicemail and i hear my mom say you need to come get me in there because i can't do this i'm not about to be in the house with them i'm about to go crazy up in here i'm about to have to fight somebody i immediately call her back and i'm like oh my god what the fuck's going on and why well, didn't say that but i'm like what's going on and so mom was like um apparently my grandfather had approached her about the phone and was like like, you know what's going on with the phone i thought this was just like a temporary thing i didn't know that you guys were actually gonna be like in a two-year contract i don't know like like i said he's elderly so he didn't really understand what she was doing like she didn't she told him exactly what he was what she was gonna do but he didn't really understand it he thought something different and so my mom immediately got defensive even though instead of her taking it as okay you know he's just an elderly man he don't really know how stuff works nowadays let me just educate him on what happened and you know what what i actually did instead of her doing that she goes back and forth with him and then brings up the whole molesting situation and so if y'all was looking at my other story times uh, my last story time it came up that apparently allegedly my mom was molested by myself grandfather and i said my step grandfather because the grandfather that i'm talking about he's not my blood grandfather even though i look at him as blood my other grandfather which is my mom's actual father he lives in the bahamas and i don't fuck with him and mind y'all like she allowed this man to live with us talk about my mama rather my mom allowed my grandfather to live with us everything like comfortably like nothing was ever spoken of about a man touching her because i know me I don't care if you my stepdad or not. Like, if, if I've been touched by you and I've gotten older and I got kids too, like, I'm not going to feel comfortable with you coming to live with me and my kids. Even if I am over with the situation, like, I'm not going to do that. So the fact that she allowed him to live in her house, then going to bring this up, like, it was just kind of, like, weird to me. So uh, she had brought it up and then they were going back and forth. And, like, my grandfather ended up telling her, she, he, he told her, he was like, I don't know what you feel or think I did to you whenever you, um, whenever you was a child, but whatever it is you think i did to you i'm sorry and this is what he said to her he didn't understand why she was accusing him of these things because according to him it never happened y'all i don't know i don't know we would never know my grandfather is dead now and my mom she's where she is i don't know like i, I can't really believe nothing that comes out of my mom's mom, mouth mom, so i don't know I, I would never know find out if it was true or not but it, it was always weird the fact that she always kept him around like i even lived with them at some point and it's like you allow me to live with somebody that allegedly touched you like that just didn't really make sense to me so that's why i never really like looked too deep deep into that i mean i don't know it still could be true but it just doesn't sit right to me that like you are moving on with your life with this person who supposedly touched you like you you are so close you have this person so close to you and he supposedly did something so wrong so bad to you at some point in your life so so they got into it and so my grandfather apologized and you know my mom wasn't hearing it long story short <laughs> they got into it and so i had to come and pick up my pick my mom up and i see her, my mom and my daughter and like a bunch of bags and stuff i guess like the clothing shit or whatever she had with her outside um and the they had like a little breeze or hallway area uh, by the building and she was just, they were just outside waiting on me and I'm just like oh my god I asked Freddie I'm like Freddie do you think your mom will let my mom crash at her place for a little while cause like I said me and Freddie was living with Freddie's mom at the time we didn't want to renew the lease at the uh, original apartment that me and Freddie were in so we decided to stay with his mom even though we ended up moving out of his mom apartment and moving back to the same exact apartment but um at that time we thought we were gonna move somewhere else freddie's mom ended up agreeing to allow my mom to come stay or not stay but to you know spend a couple of nights there until she decided what she was gonna do freddie's mom didn't have no extra room so mom's on in the living room but freddie's mom she got six kids and so it was me freddie his four siblings he had another sibling that wasn't living with her at the time um but it was a it was a full house and of course me my pregnant ass and my daughter it was just crazy okay i felt a little embarrassed because i'm like I mean, I'm living with my mother-in-law. Well, my mother-in-law at the time, I'm living with, well, she wasn't my mother-in-law, like a bitch, we wasn't married, fuck. I'm living with my boyfriends, my boyfriend at the time, uh, mama, and my mama living with us too. And it was just kind of like an embarrassing situation, but his mom briefly kind of knew what was going on with my mom. My mom hadn't done anything to his mom, so, you know, it was, it was no issue, right? 
So um, she stayed there for a couple of days. Eventually she ended up leaving. My mom ended up leaving to go back to Louisiana for a little while. I think she was supposed to go get her stuff from Rough Rider, but she ended up coming right back. When she came back, my grandma at this time, her and my grandma had like made amends again. Now at this point she has burned her bridge with my grandma, but my grandma has forgiven her. So is that really a bridge that she burned? Then we'll be able to determine if that bridge is actually really burned or not towards the end. She allowed her to come stay back her, with her now at this point, my grandma I had moved to another apartment. I'll go ahead and put the complex in the background. My grandma don't even live in Texas no more, y'all. So just don't even, you know, I don't mind posting these things, you know. So my grandma lived in these apartments, um, which wasn't too far from where she originally was staying. The reason my mom came back mainly is because I was due to have my son. And so my mom wanted to be there for the birth. Because she was there for the birth of my daughter. And she wanted to be there for the birth of my son as well. So cool. Me and mom was still cool at this point. So of course, I wanted my mom there as well. Apparently, her and Mal start talking back again <laughs> y'all i don't know it's something about mouth it's something about mouth which my mama just can't let go of or at this point couldn't let go of very toxic she had these arguments with him and and she'd be like really 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 loud mind y'all she wasn't even supposed to be living in an apartment with my grandma my grandma only had a one bedroom apartment so my my mom was already sleeping in the living room so like she would be like up in the middle of the night like you know fussing on the phone with him and so she didn't want to like wake up my grandparents so sometimes she would go outside which was even worse for her to do i'm pretty sure she was arguing on the phone between him and rough rider because i know she was still communicating with rough rider in between these times as well so loud my grandma was able to hear her outside from the inside of her apartment and so my grandma kind of warned her she was like you know i don't want these people to, to know that you live here so kind of like keep it down like if you want to have, have conversations cool but like lower your tone because you know you're not supposed to be here and i don't want to get in trouble for them having you here a couple days went by my grandma calls me and she tells me that this morning or that that the morning of that call rather she got a note on her door it was a it wasn't a notice to vacate but it was a warning kind of like a violation in a way i don't know what you call this shit whenever it's apartment the paper said we detected that someone else is living with you and you know per the lease agreement anyone who's not on the lease shouldn't like stay three days at a time or something like that they have like some type of rule stipulation or whatever y'all know how apartments are and so, I mean, technically they were right. My mom didn't belong there. And then, so because she would become a disturbance to the peace, you know, that, that kind of like um, red flagged them anyway. And so I guess somehow they found out that it was an unauthorized guest, which she was, in fact, my mom. And so my grandma, she called me about it and told me because she was kind of nervous. She didn't know how to, how to tell my mom. She didn't want my mom to think that she didn't want her to stay there. At this point, my mom was like really, really like easily defensive. Like, you know, that's how my mom was. And so my grandma was trying to be careful. And so she called me to kind of like figure out how to, how we gonna break the news. And so I told her, I said, you know what? You just gonna have to tell her. I mean, it's nothing other than what it is. I mean, you have the letters now, like you lying. So I mean, she, that's it. My grandma was like, well, I don't know where she would go. You know, we ended up coming to the decision that, that she would move in with my aunt, which she didn't stay too far, but um you know because she, she can't come stay with me because bitch i was with somebody she was like well i'll talk to her and then you know we'll we'll just let her go by your aunt well, my grandma breaks the news to her she didn't trip like, yeah you know it's cool whatever. so it was like i'm good but bitch I, i'm still mad kind of attitude even though it wasn't my grandma's fault but it's still kind of she still kind of made it seem like it was so the tension between her my grandma and my grandfather was already kind of like weird because of what she had previously said but um whenever that happened my mom was just like okay whatever cool so she had left and went let's stay with my aunt and once she moved in with my aunt that's when the shit really 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 began to like hit me like wow like my mom really like as y'all can tell she had already been doing like weird ass off the wall on stuff that was unlike her ass shit so at this time, uh, after my mom moved in with my aunt, my mom and Mouth were communicating. Mouth ended up coming to Houston for a while because I believe he stayed for about a week or so. Throughout the, those few days that Mouth was in Houston, that's when shit between me and my mom got real. I've just only been talking about her burning her bridges with like other people and the family and different co-workers like shit like that. But now, now it's time for me to discuss why I'm not talking to her right now. Now it's time to discuss the main reason why I have a restraining order on her as of today. Time to get down to the nitty gritty because quite frankly, I'm sick and tired of holding this in. I want y'all to know like what happened. I want y'all to know what she did to me. I want y'all to know why I feel the way that I feel. So let's talk about it. Alrighty, let's talk about it. And the reason why is, let me disclose in my next video because bitch, <laughs> you thought 
I'm done, bitch. I've been look, look. Let me tell you something. It has taken me a while since I can finish the story time. Like I didn't have about like three, four, five breaks in between the story time, and I'm about to have another break too because people still keep going in and out the room, knowing that I'm recording and what. Exactly, that's why. This story time went the complete opposite way that it was supposed to. I hope y'all enjoy this series so far. The next story time, that's when I'm going to be ta talking about the assault. That's when I'm going to be talking about the fight between my mom and I. As you can see, like, me and my mom's relationship has already kind of been, like, rocky at this point. Moving into 2016, that's when our relationship really got to its worst. So, like, it, it has never been that bad. No, I'm lying. Actually, 2018 is whenever it got really, really bad. <laughs> wow so and we're not even in nowhere near 2018 yet so actually um <laughs> 2016 i'm gonna be discussing the year 2016 in my next story time um, we getting somewhere but bitch we ain't really got nowhere yet so i understand what i mean whenever the series is finally over but we're, we're we still got some ways to go we still got some ways to go so don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below if you haven't done it already you don't want to miss it my mom assaulted me like literally came to my house and fucking assaulted me and so i'll be talking about that in my next story time um how that came about and so forth so um thank y'all so much for watching i love you all so much thank y'all so much for the support i love to see and read y'all comments because like some of y'all be in the comments praying for me and shit like y'all don't know like a bitch really really be needing that prayer because and i can't really talk too much about what i'm really going through right now because it's like i said the story is still being written and so if i talk about it now then it won't be no point of me doing this series so i can't really disclose it but it's been it's been a struggle with these story times y'all it's been really really so hard um mentally for me um as you can see by my consistency so i'm trying my best i'm trying my best to like break free out of whatever i'm feeling or whatever i'm going through um and i'm, I'm trying so if if i slip y'all send me a message check on me be like angie you all right you good bitch i don't just be not uploading just because like i don't like y'all like i love doing this like this makes me like right now i feel amazing recording this video but off camera like i've been can't discuss it <laughs> i love you guys i love you i love you i love you i love you so much for the support don't forget to push that notification bar and also follow me on my social media grandma angie gonna see y'all next time <laughs> i'm gonna see y'all my next video i love y'all so much